Hi everyone, today we're in the Welsh town of Neath. Now obviously in these new format videos that we're doing where we're visiting locations and digging out the history and sharing with you the present day towns that we go through, you won't be surprised to see a castle in the background. But that beautiful 13th century Norman gateway is only half the story. It's built on a similar site to where the Romans came in 70 AD and they set up here right alongside the point where you could ford the River Nedd. And it's the anglicised mutation of the River Nedd that gives us Neath these days. But as well as the castle, we have a town. And in this location, they are very close together because right up alongside the walls of the castle behind me, I am overlooking the car park for Morrison's where we've parked the car. And that's going to be the story of today. As cheek by jowl, you see a modern world growing up around ancient buildings. The castle behind, it knew some rather troublesome times in the early years. The original castle was destroyed, then rebuilt. The one they built was destroyed and rebuilt. This is from that final phase of building. And it stands as all that remains practically except for a few foundation areas and some steps from an earlier castle that stood there. But as I say, this has been a strategic place for a long time. On the mountain tops here, you will see the remains of Celtic hill forts, then the Romans, then the Normans, then so much else has gone on here. And we'll share some of that history with you today. So come on, let's take a look around the town. What a lot of charity shops. This must be the fourth one we've passed now. As you can see, because the rugby is on at the moment, the Five Nations. Is it? Is it five? Six, 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 six nations now. now. Yeah. <laughs> I lose count. Yeah. Then um, they're starting to. They put a lot of Welshy things in the window. Feeling very patriotic. Over here we've got all the Valentine's type theme. Look at that. Very red. Very pretty. Travel house. Should we go on holidays? On vacation? Let's have a look. Where should we go? We could go to Paris, £395 per person, four nights on the 13th of March to the Libertel Opera, wherever that is. Or should we go to the Southern Caribbean, £2,179 per person, ten nights from Heathrow at the Celebrity Silhouette. Oh, what have you seen? Fancy Hawaii, Florida, oh. LA and Hawaii. And we know a few people in Florida these days. Oh, and it's only £2,999 per person. It was 24 nights, that's nice. Hide me in your suitcase. Yeah, <laughs> and then just one of us can pay. Oh, young and lively, that's not for us, is it? In Malia. Well, I don't think we'll be booking anything today. And what's the exchange rate? 110 for euros and 117 for dollars.
estate agent. Let's have a look what sort of properties you can get for your money here. We got this one offers in the region of £175,000. And there's this one offers above £250,000. And then they got this terrace one here, offers in the region of £89,950. And a few more, nothing terribly grand. Some towns you go to and they got really big farmhouses and manor houses, but not here. Oh, that's a nice size one. But it's old. Here we got Poundland, and for all our American viewers, or from other countries, this is a bit like Dollar Tree. Everything was a pound, but prices have gone up the same as with Dollar Tree. But they have some interesting things. company in my studio. I thought you'd like to see the things that I bought in the pound shop and see what I make with it. Now I'm going to make something really quick and simple, so easy and if you think oh I could never make a craft because I just haven't got what it takes, you'll be able to do this one and also if you don't like committing yourself to using your craft things by cutting them up, you won't have to cut anything up. I've got these picks I've got a bit of a problem. I took this out of the bag when we got home and this one pick had snapped off the main pick. So I've just fixed it with some florist tape that I had here. I've got my bag of eggs, one golden egg, Ooh. my carrots and my basket. I think the bargain of the day was this basket at a pound. It's really nice. Now I want to put these in at the back of the basket. So I'm going to make sure the handle's towards the back and then I don't want to cut them just yet because this is not something I'm committed to and I want to keep for the rest of my life. So I'm going to be a little bit more frugal with my decorations and make sure they're reusable. So that one's going to go in there eventually. It will stand up. And then do the same with this one too. So you've got one in each of the back corners. Now they're not going to stay in position but that doesn't matter because we've got a secret weapon. It's a bunny I bought from the charity shop for 50p. I think it was 50p. We'll say a pound just in case but I think this one was 50p. So now we pop those back in and ideally if you've got three hands this is much easier. Pop your bunny in and sit him on the little wiggly bits and look at that. Now fluff these out. I've done a bit of fluffing out. You wouldn't believe the difference if you make a little bit of effort to make all your picks open up. They look okay in the shop, but when you bring them home and open them up, they just look so much nicer. So open them all up as much as you fancy. You don't have to have them really flamboyant. You know me, I do love things a little bit flamboyant. So the next thing we're going to do is take this tissue paper thin strips of it off. Now if you can buy shredded tissue paper, or you've got some shredded tissue paper, it'll be much faster. I believe in using up what you've got, so I'm cutting up this one. Right, let's see if that's enough. It'll look a lot more now when we open it all out. This is more time consuming than cutting it. So now we're just going to 
put some of this in so he looks like it's more of a finished product. Just plonked in like that. Doesn't look very good. I quite like it. Covering half his body so he looks like he's popping out from it. You may want to sit him on top, but I think that would be a real problem trying to hold these in place while you put this in and then put a bunny on. Tear off the excess. Pop some random carrots in. And we won't put yellow eggs in because they'll virtually disappear. I think we'll put blue. And a green. Why not? And that pink. There we go. Try to cover the holes <laughs> because they don't look so pretty with the hole showing. And then finally, I'm going to paint one of these rabbits up using the paint they've supplied to see if it's any good. Now, this isn't the best quality paint in the world. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be watercolour. It's certainly not acrylic or it's certainly not acrylic that's very opaque. But it doesn't matter because it's given him a bit of a whitey colour. It looks like you've done something to him even though you haven't really transformed him oh there we go it's a little bit different to the way it was not completely so while that's drying i'm going to make a bow got this wired ribbon make a bow shape scrunch up the middle you can tie this with something else i like to use a pipe cleaner because it's so much easier you just pull it to the back and give it a twist and then we're going to dovetail the ends, so fold them in half and snip upwards towards the centre, making them as close to even as you can. You can then snip the ends off your pipe cleaner. Hot glue generally isn't forever. I find that it, after a while it goes a little bit hard and it can get knocked off. But it's brilliant if you're doing something like this and you don't want to commit yourself by over gluing something. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on there and glue it in place on the front of the basket giving it a push to flatten the pipe cleaner and then take your little bunny which mine isn't quite dry but it's best to dry your bunny off first and then pop you on the front like that and now i got a lovely little easter decoration in a basket it's difficult to show you because my camera is in a bit of an awkward place but that's what he looks like and it was really quick as you saw if you didn't paint your bunny it would be even faster and you can reuse everything and you don't need any skills or talents to do this it's very pretty and very effective and if like me you're never quite contented you can keep fiddling around with these picks until they're in the right place if you join us on saturday night for our live show 9 p.m uk time i'll show you my bunny a little bit closer and we also have a little bit of a quiz and a chat and a lot of fun. So I'll see you there. Right, let's get back over to finding out a little bit more about Admiral Nelson and his niece connection. There's the town hall. The streets are quite deserted as it's a Sunday morning, but here's the Castle Hotel. And Admiral Lord Nelson stayed here on his way to Milford Haven to join his fleet. So imagine him walking out of one of the doors. I'm looking around and thinking, right, off we go to Milford Haven. Oh, look, this plaque was unveiled on Saturday the 14th of March 1981 by the President of the Welsh Rugby Union, Mr Cliff Jones, OBE, MA, to commemorate the inaugural meeting of the Union, which took place at this hotel on the 12th of March 1881. Ooh. Lord Nelson paid a visit and the beginning of the Welsh Rugby Union. This is a rather prestigious hotel. Now, when I took the footage of the town hall the other side, I didn't put it on camera, but I did say to Phil, it's a bit boring for a town hall. But look at that, we were obviously on the boring end. <laughs> this is the very nice end. Beautiful. And it's in Church Place, Meister Eglis. Well, this town is certainly a town we're enjoying. We've loved going in the charity shops and the pound shop and having a look around. Obviously, some of the shops are closed today because it is a Sunday. But strangely enough, so is the church. All the gates are locked up. So we can't take you in to take a closer look at the church here. But the church is really part of the 
history that put this place on the map. And we're looking back a long way to the times of the castle. And that is a building we can visit this Sunday morning. And we're going to now. We're going to take you over to Neath Abbey. But as we go across, we're going to let you see a few more of the lovely shops around this gorgeous town of Neath. So here we are, we're inside the Abbey and I am so excited. This looks absolutely fabulous. And this is the first bit we come to. So we'll have a look through the windows. Ooh. Now that looks like there were columns there. We'll pop in and have a look when we can find the way in. That is looking quite spectacular over there. Looks like a manor house. You can see there's a lot of wall left but there is a lot of wall and a ceiling and a roof completely missing. That's what comes of making your roof out of lead. Yes, <laughs> somebody will come and help themselves to it. Yes, especially at the time of King Henry VIII. It meant it was a free for all and the locals did well out of the lead. Danger. Please take care when visiting this site. Ancient monuments can be dangerous. Children must be supervised at all times. This monument may contain these hazards. An even steep or narrow stairs. Low headroom. Please let your eye adjust to the darkness. And even on slippery surfaces and unprotected drops. Do not climb on the monument. Okay. I think what they're trying to say is it's not safe. And if you fall, it's not their fault. No. <laughs> Right down here we go. Ooh, there's some steps and we can go in a door. Oh, we've got a ramp. So we can go that way if we want to. Oh, oh yeah. Do fancy. Steps or ramp? We'll go down the ramp because the door looks much more grand. Through this doorway that used to go somewhere. <laughs> and over to this doorway. Oh, look at that. It's amazing, isn't it? That it's still actually looking like an arch. Even though most of the stone on this side is completely gone we have a look you can see there seems to be like an edge piece missing but if we go right to the bottom it looks like people have been and taken all those edge pieces to rebuild other buildings right let's go in ding dong can we come in please oh thank you oh look at this very nice there's a tree. I get the feeling that's probably Buddleia. We have a terrible trouble with Buddleia getting into old buildings and quite new buildings actually and destroying them. Now uh, the three windows, very atmospheric in here. I tell you what, mm. the temperature in here is about five degrees colder it's than It's very there. cold. Yeah. The it... sun isn't getting in and it's freezing. No, I walked through the door and it shivered. Yep. Oh, oh look, there's a fireplace. Well, what's left of the fireplace so we have to look and see if we can see up the chimney it's the low uh, uh, yep we can see i don't love to see the sky through a chimney i don't know why lovely rounded back wall here but the fireplace is long gone i wonder if that went to somebody else's home you can see there that's where the mantelpiece would have been fitted in, I assume. Oh, and that's gone too. Let's have a look at this column. That one, there's not a lot left. But this one over here, you can see the basic shape of it. So let's see. Oh, it was very pretty. They really made the effort with it. 
Don't you want the boring circular one? Even if it was boring further up, it may have been. The bottom bit is very pretty. Look at that. What have you found? A bit like the doors out there. Look, it's just this one bit left. Mmm, it's but all been taken. I wondered if that was going up and then coming over. Oh yes, like cloistery type yeah, thing. Yeah, forming mm. those sort of um, onto the pillars. Yeah. So making what would have been a beautiful architectural roof. Yep. Be amazing. Let's go look out of the window, see if we can see anything. I always like to look out the windows. Out the windows, up chimneys, I don't know. The things that amuse me. Oh look, you can see the house over there. Not very clearly because of the camera is happy with the light, but we're going to look at that house now. Come on, let's go over. Look at that. Oh, I think I could turn that into a very pleasant house. What do you think? Should we go in and have a look around? See if it's the sort of place any of us would like to live. You may find it's not so pretty inside. We'll change our mind. Actually, 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 yes. you're not the only one who thought that would make a very nice house. Oh, right. Yeah, because it was a Tudor manor house, a beautiful mansion created mm. out of just a small part of the abbey. It was the abbot in 1500 that decided, oh, this would make a des res. And that's why it looks more house-like. Yes, yeah, it does. And some of the features are more intact because it's 400 years newer than much of the rest of the abbey. So there we go, love. You're not on your own. Somebody else had the idea before you. Oh, we could have stiff competition. Let's go look around. years before you. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. here's the door. Can we get down there? We'll be okay, I think. Bing bong! Can we come in, please? Thank you. Right, here we go. Go down a little bit. And then, oh, very precarious, across. And then they must have been steps down. There's a very noisy bird up there somewhere. And if we look there, you can see there was a window there with an arch. And there's some sort of, I'm not sure what that hole would have been for. And then up the top there is a fireplace. And then a chimney seems to have been taken off all the way down. Oh no, just a support pillar, something like that, because there's no fireplace at the bottom. Hmm, but do you imagine what it would be like right up there? I'd love to go up and have a look, see how far you can see. But we can't, because there's no stairs. Of course, one of the other things, because this was uh, not a new build, but an alteration is not just the windows that we now see, but there is a window that isn't there anymore. Right, that's why it's like that. See, this has been, this stonework was added to close off that window so they could have a wall. Mm. Probably not to hang the TV on or anything. Oh no, I don't think it was because they needed to fit an IKEA unit in the corner. No, not in Tudor <laughs> times, but they were just making smaller rooms in order to facilitate the new use, which was a grand, very grand house. Yes. I found another way. Ooh, okay. Right, through we go. Oh, are we still indoors? Yes, just yeah. about. <laughs> well, allegedly we're indoors. Look, there's another fireplace up there and a doorway into the next room. And there we got that doorway that we couldn't walk through. And another, oh, there's a fireplace. Let's see if we can see out of the top. I, I can't reach over, so I'm going to pop the camera there and you can let me know. Can you see any light up there? And let's pop through here. Oh, wow. This is amazing. It's a wonderful experience to be here. You can see all the square blocks there. That's where Joyce would come, I think. Wall supports, things like that. And there we've got another fireplace. And let's have a look at the chimney. Oh no, we can't see out the top of that one. Oh look, there's a very narrow gap with some steps. We just have to. Go. Oh. oh, where are we going? Ah, this is a very small room, is it? The privy. I would say probably there's a little hole there 
which could have been the toilet. And hmm, if so, what are these here? What's down there? Hmm, no idea. What do you reckon? Oh, now there is hollow. So that's another chimney, is it? Yes, you can see the light at the top. So this would have been then a fireplace. Like this. So I don't think they'd put a fireplace in the privy. Why not? It was a posh house. Mm, I suppose they could have done. Look at the window. Let's have a look out of the window. It's a bit noisy because we're right next door to a dual carriageway. So there's a busy road just past those trees. You can see there's a big blue container. As with all of these places, there's a constant rolling program of upgrading them and trying to hold them together. Walking around the outside now, you can see these window frames. All stone. And then they put like fiberglassy stuff in to fill those in, but it just gives you that sense of what it would have really looked like when there was glass in there. There you can just about see that dual carriageway I was telling you about. And here there's some building works. We're not allowed in that bit, which is a shame. But when you think we have access to all this, and this is free. This isn't because we're members of Cardo. Anyone can come here for nothing every day of the week other than Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and New Year's Day, I think. It's open from 10 in the morning until 4 in the evening every day. We're here on a Sunday morning and we arrived so early we saw the gentleman unlock the gate at exactly <laughs> yes. 10 o'clock. We're keen. We are indeed. And Caroline was saying about that dual carriageway in the distance. And of course, the dual carriageway of the 18th century, that would have been the canal. And that's just on the edge there beyond the fence. So this has always been right at the centre of what's going on from that industrial revolution right the way through to the present day. That's a very big step. Careful everyone, up you go. Whoa, up. And that's the bit you can't get in. We'll fall around, see where we can get. Ooh, we can go down here. That doesn't look very safe, does it? Can you see the lean on that wall? I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but it feels a little bit scary walking along here, as if it's going to land on my head. Oh, look at that little hole there. I wonder if there's one the other side, so it was for joists. Let's have a look. Yep, there we go. The joists, and then they put floorboards over the top. Right. Walk to the end of this. I think I can see a doorway. Right down there, we find out. Yes. Go through this way. Down the slope. And here we got more arches. Another big window. Perhaps this was another fireplace. You can see a corner there. Or was it a doorway that's been changed as part of the renovation? Could have been. And then we've got this arch which has been filled in and then the filling in has fallen out. And we'll follow along here. The birds are full of fun this morning. I don't know if he's picking up on camera, but they're chirping away. Down we go. We you over there looking at the vaulted ceilings, which are over there. Look at that. That's pretty magnificent, isn't it? Oh, yes, I'd like a ceiling like that in my house. Can you go in the door? Oh. It's locked. What a shame. 
and it needs a very big key. Oh yes. That is a key all and a half. Oh look, there's a reeded column, very large. If I put my hand there, you can see very big. And uh, we got, oh. Now this could have been a window, but the fact that that one is closed off and this one's got a stone back. So this must have been where they would put an icon, something like that. And there's one, two of them. And I would imagine these are just some sort of support or possibly even over a very big fireplace that went right down to there. Could have been. And then there are just columns everywhere. Got one there. One there. And these are probably wall supports rather than columns. There. And down there and there oh, there's something fat over there a very big one now not a lot of people know this what's that four thousand tons of rubble was removed from this area between 1923 and 1935. Whoa. before that you couldn't see any of this carvings and beautiful area where you were there mm -hmm. that's the chapel not a lot of people know that either in fact the only people who know these things are the people who read the signs because there's a sign over there saying chapel and just over there there's a plaque saying they remove 4,000 tons. <laughs> People often ask me where I get all my knowledge from. Now I'm giving away my secrets because it's amazing what you learn reading what's written on the walls. <laughs> so this is the monk's choir. And this is the lay brother's mm -hmm. choir. It is amazing to be here on a Sunday morning surrounded by these ruins that are just rising up out of the ground and reaching towards the sky with only the sound of the birds singing. It has something of a beauty about it which for me possibly transcends the beauty that was here when this place was built all those years ago. Founded in 1130, this was a phenomenal structure to undertake. And the mammoth task was undertaken by a Norman Baron who was called Sir Richard de Granville. And there is a legend about Sir Richard which tells of a trip to the Holy Land when he went on pilgrimage. The legend of this place tells how the knight went on his quest to the Holy Land, visiting Jerusalem on his pilgrimage. But on his return to Wales, he stopped off at Malta. And there he was woken from his sleep by an angel in a vision. And the angel told him that pilgrimage of itself was of no benefit to him, no matter how far he traveled or where he visited. In order to get the true blessings, he needed to put things right back home. He needed to return the lands to those who rightfully owned it and to give the wastelands to the church. Now, that's a rather grand and romantic notion of how things were. A more pragmatic view of history would be that Sir Richard decided in order to try and quell the uprisings in the locality, he would marry a local dignitary's daughter taking for himself a Welsh princess as his bride. And the Abbey, well, he gave the wastelands to the church. They believe in order to create what we would call a neutral zone, in order to try and quell the bloodshed and uprising that was taking place. And to some measure, it seems to have succeeded because there is one account historically that states that when warriors would approach this part in order to cross and ford the River Neth, they had to leave their weapons with the monks at the abbey and collect them when they left. So, whatever the truth of the legends and the tales that we hear, one thing's for sure, he did build this abbey, or at least 
he had it built and it was grand described by a Tudor historian as one of the most beautiful places of worship in all of Wales of course being the fairest abbey in the land of Wales didn't save this place from the actions of a king King Henry VIII who through his decision to bring about the dissolution of the monasteries brought the end to monastic life in this country and these sorts of buildings were brought down the lead from the roof was taken and they were left in ruins now this particular abbey did have a stay of execution because when the decision was made that this abbey was to be dissolved the local abbot paid up a large fine that bought him a couple of years but ultimately the end for this place was going to be the same as all the others across the land they were going to end in ruins but unlike some of the ruins that we see in Wales this place has a strange history all of its own because while Tintern Abbey that famous ruin that was painted by Turner he took his first sketches in 1792 and a year later visited by Wordsworth who captured it in poetic lines this place at the same time in 1790 there was a lease being signed with an industrialist this was the time when the canal was put in running right past this place in order that it could take supplies and produce from the industrial units that were growing in this point right the way down to the river but not only did the abbey have for a neighbour an ironworks but right here in the abbey they built a copper smelting plant there were furnaces there were workshops there were men housed within these abbey walls in accommodations there was all sorts of activity going on and the industrial revolution that gave birth to the town that we have seen almost brought an end to all that stands around us but the industrial revolution came and went the copper works that were here did their best to meet the needs of a growing economy but ultimately it's the ruins of an abbey that was built some 900 years ago that stand proud today on this site and tell their own story to all those who will come and listen well I hope you've got the sense of this amazing place I've got to be honest it feels so vibrant so full of life even though it's ruins some of those ruins looked almost like fossilized dragons rising up out of the Welsh soil and these towers that just reach up into the sky are so inspiring this was well worth a visit I feel if you agree please give us a thumbs up doing, doing, doing. and don't forget if you haven't subscribed then please subscribe and you'll get notification of all the videos we put out and if you know anyone who would like to come with us on these journeys let them know and share the link with your friends but most importantly this time like every other time until the next time have fun bye, bye. but the industrial revolution but the industrial revolution <laughs>